Let's take a quick look at the section on ramps and stairs. We have generated a simple model with a couple of holes where we are going to place a ramp and a staircase. As we have discussed, if we click on the ramp tool, a default ramp appears. But as in many other cases, we see that we have several types of ramps. We can duplicate and generate all the types we need. We can manage the construction, shape, function, and even the size. But most importantly, it only has one material. So if we want a ramp with multiple materials, we will need to generate several ramps with those materials on top of each other, or we can generate an incline floor. One of the most important parts to note is the maximum incline length and the slope that we will have to manage, depending on the type of ramp that we want to place. When we are inside the ramp tool, we will have to place the base level and the offset, as well as the upper level with its offset, to adapt our ramp to the specific requirements of the project. If we see the hole in level two and measure it, we see that we have a section width of two meters. Therefore, we will have to tell it that our width is two meters. As our section is uniform, we'll have to make a ramp per section without having to complicate things using a contour ramp. If we select section and place our ramp from the beginning to the end of the section and click accept, we'll get a warning that says, the ramp does not reach the upper restriction. If we enter the section, we'll see that the ramp does not reach the end because the slope does not go up from one point to the other. Therefore, if we want to change it and not calculate the slope, simply by entering the maximum slope of one, we will apply, accept, and not recalculate our ramp up to the upper constraint. In this case, if we want to know the slope, go to the note tab, then slope elevation, and we will obtain the slope elevation. Even if we select this elevation, we can change the format of the units. We can put the percentage, even with decimals, to know what the percentage of our ramp is, which in this case is 21.84. In the case of stairs, they operate in a very similar way. If we go to the architecture tab and select staircase, as in the case of the ramps, we will have to place the levels that we want to join by means of a staircase. Likewise, if we edit the type in each of the stair types, we see that there are many types of stairs, assembled, modeled, in situ, prefabricated. When we will edit the stair type, we'll see that we have many more parameters to manage and configure. The maximum riser height, depths, widths, calculation, rules, even the sections of the landings. We'll have all of these requirements. We have to adapt it according to the regulation of our region or country, the regulations that regulate our stairs or individual circumstances. If we want to generate a staircase, as in the case of the ramps, we can generate them by straight section, by curved sections, or by spiral. And then these three stairs, by center and endpoints, the offset staircase in L, or the offset staircase in U, which are predefined stairs. Also, with this pencil, we can create a sketch of the stairs and place, as in the example, you can see what the section is, each riser and the slope or path of the staircase. We can also create automatic landings or landings by sketch and manage the supports. In the case of sections, it's more or less the same as the ramps. We measure the width of the opening and we see that we have a gap of three and a half meters. So we can make a stair with a minimum section width of 1.5, for example, to obtain a three meter wide double section staircase with a half meter span. If we enter section and select straight section, we see that the width is already automatically placed for us, even for the landing. The only thing we will have to do is place the risers that we want, and that, as we can see, automatically changes the height of the riser, and in this case, says how the stair will be positioned. 
I'm going to take the section to the right and draw the staircase. It marks the number of remaining risers that there are, and in this case, I'm going to draw half of it, and then, at the same time, I'm going to place the other part. Simply, when we have placed both sections, we'll have to increase or decrease the landing according to our needs and move the staircase as needed. At the moment, we validate and enter the section of the staircase and see that, indeed, our staircase has been generated automatically. This is the quick way to see how these elements are modeled in Revit. From here, if you would like to see how they are made in further detail, we invite you to see us in the following tutorials or our other Guild Pillar Academy courses. Thanks for watching.